Hi everybody and welcome to this, uh, well it's an, a Halloween special and this one is for Becky Quick, her husband is going to be 65 this Friday so happy birthday to you and here we see the son of Frankenstein and we are looking from a downward position. This guy is really really high so we look from down to up. So the ears are actually quite low in this uh, portrait as you can see and uh, normally they would be uh, between the eye and the nose line but because we are standing very low uh, the ears will be placed lower so keep this in mind now I want to make it especially dark of course for this Halloween so what I'm using here are my uh, pastels by Faber Castell and uh, I'm putting in another layer of a little bit of blue and uh, you can see that the shape uh, and the shading is going from dark to lighter and then the figure itself is a little bit dark uh, in the lower part so this is the way that I uh, put the first layer in then I take a little bit of red and I put that over the blue because I do not have any purple in this kit so I'm just going to mix it and then I put in a little bit of green for instance but feel free to use any color you want but this will be enough for me it's a nice layer of Faber Castell and then I take a brush which is clean and dry and then I simply uh, push in those pigments into the paper and I'm using a uh, well, very simpy, simple uh, army newsprint paper and a cup of coffee. <laughs> then I take my charcoal pencil and this one is by Wolf's Carbon 6B. And then I can simply uh, use my setup sketch with all the Riley lines in them. And I'm going to uh, measure out Let's see, well, the complete length of the head is 14 and a half, so I was in the right direction here. Then um, put my coffee aside and take the center line here. And putting in a center line is a very, very nice, a very helpful uh, line. Then we have the hairline and going down from the hairline, the face is divided into three parts. And in this case, the first line is at 3.2 centimeters, and it goes to the uh, uh, that big bone there, the front bone. Then we go to the lower part of the nose, which is at 4.2 centimeters. And then we have the lower part, which is a little bit bigger, 5.2. And again, this is because of the perspective that is going on. And then I check the width of the head, which is ten and a half. So I simply take ten and a half, and then I know how broad the head will be. The face itself is inside the hairline, of course, as you can see here. And uh, you can see the dorsal lines. This is the hairline, and. Um, well, I'm just pointing out, I'm putting in uh, little landmarks for myself. And, uh, well, a face will appear eventually. Now, this is the connection from that uh, brow line. And then we have uh, the bridge of the nose. And the nose, uh, well, you can see underneath the nose again, because we are standing in a very low position. Mr. Son of Frankenstein is uh, like a big building. So I'm just imagining a, a huge building and I'm looking upwards towards that building. And uh, well, you can see the eyes. Uh, the eyes are not equal. One eye is a little bit more open than the other. And also, what is very important is the mouth line. You can see it. The left corner is much lower than the right corner. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take especially notice of that. And you can see uh, there are some uh, beautiful light, lights 
uh, on the upper lip that we will put in later on with the pencil eraser. Um, well, the upper lip is all covered in shadow again. The lower lip is uh, hardly not noticeable. It's uh, kind of uh, falling away behind that upper lip. Then here we have that frown line and there's a lot of contrast there. Uh, you can see the top of the eyelids, the upper eyelids, and then the eyes appear in, in the shadow again. And they are uh, lifeless and uh, well, they, they, they bring a lot of nice contrast, a lot of shadow in there. And further on I put in the side of the face of course. And he has a very, very broad chin. It's a huge chin. And, um, well, we are standing lower than, uh, well, maybe if we were standing in front of him, we would be reaching only the chest of this uh, model here. So I check the side, of course, the ear lobes. They are placed very, very low. So, uh, making sure that the uh, placement of the ears is uh, very important. You will not recognize anyone by its ears, but the placement in this case, because of the perspective, is uh, very, very important. Now, I see a big scar tissue here on the side of his uh, head. So, I make a landmark of that too. And then you can see that the neck uh, stretches down and this one is big too it's a very muscular uh, neck here and then the jacket comes from behind that huge neck and here you can see the shadow casted by the chin on the neck itself and then we see the rest of the jacket here on the right side and I simply put in uh, all of the shadow and of course, you can find the real-time tutorial and all the setup sketches on my Patreon page, should you be interested. Well, going up further, 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 I've placed in the shadow and now I want to put in the bolt, uh, which goes through his neck, used to bring life into this model. And I think that's a very, very nice detail. I used the ruler to make sure that uh, that's all uh, aligned. And uh, I think this end here on the right side, it's just amazing. It looks like a fork or something. So that's a very nice detail, that bolt there. And now I have most of the landmarks in. And I can start uh, to put in more and more shadows. Uh, shadows for the ears, of course. And uh, the upper lip uh, takes a lot of um, shadow there. And you can also see a little bit of the wrinkles that are around that top lip. And also uh, beside, uh, on the sides of the uh, corners of the mouth and uh, the sides of the face take a lot of shadows too and I also want to put in those stitches that are on top of his head of course and there's a little scar too on the left of his head I place that in too and then I can simply start to shade in the rest of the face putting in the shadows in the ears of course and once I'm happy with all the placements I can start putting in those lifeless eyes so I simply put in a lot of shadow there I'm not actually uh, uh, drawing uh, eyes I'm just draw I draw shadows and uh, only the upper eyelids catch uh, a little bit of light but then uh, the eyes themselves, they are covered all in shadow. And it's uh, very important to leave out uh, uh, any shine 
in those eyes because he is so very dead. <laughs> and then I take the pencil eraser. And the pencil eraser is something uh, I love. I just love it. It's just an eraser placed in a pencil and you can sharpen it uh, with a simple uh, pencil sharpener. And I use it to lift up a little bit of those pigments that we've put in. And you can see it here at work uh, for the left eye uh, eyelid there and a little bit of shine just next to the eyelid. Well, that's lovely, lovely, and I, I leave out uh, any irises or pupils. I do not put those in because he has to look very, very lifeless. Uh, a lot of light is casted upon the bridge of the nose, of course. So I simply erase out all the pigments that are on top of the nose. And the pencil eraser is a uh, well a great tool for drawing, so I hardly ever use it to erase uh, mistakes or something. I simply use it as a uh, drawing tool. Then I put in the uh, the shadows just next to the nose and a lot of shadow for the inside of the eye, and you can see the lifelessness. I just put a little bit of. Uh, the white of the eye here, just a little bit, but just very scarcely. And uh, just beside the nostrils here, and then I can place the light upon uh, the uh, upper lip. And it is because of that strange light that is coming from above, shining upon uh, the forehead, and then just uh, well, cast it upon the bridge of the nose and uh, the light on the side of the chin here uh, that makes this uh, well model so amazing there's a lot of contrast here uh, the blackness of the hair uh, the darkness in the, the eye sockets and it's just amazingly a, a beautiful way to study portraits and then at the very end of my drawing, I uh, erase the pigments just behind this uh, son of Frankenstein so that the contrast is even bigger. And uh, well, I love it. I love this way of drawing. It's a very sketchy way and uh, well, you can work this out as, as far as you want, but it's an excellent, excellent exercise. So, uh, well, <laughs> Becky, I hope you like it. And uh, uh, I wish you a, a very happy birthday with your husband. And for all of you that have been watching and drawing along with me, I wish you all the success with this amazing son of Frankenstein. Happy Halloween, everybody. Thank you for watching and uh, maybe I can see you check out my Patreon page and well, I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye bye.